All right, what is up, YouTube? It is uh, K Rat here. I'm back with another good video today. Um, uh, be sure to go check out Ashley's Corner. I got uh, the source from her. Uh, this is like my second video out of three videos that I, you know, like will be making. And uh, yeah, let's uh, go ahead and uh, talk about what's at stake right now. So. As of recently, I believe, um, I believe, uh, Teofima Lopez could be in the works of facing, uh, Montana Love, in which I would personally like that fight, but then on top of that, Bob Arum, you know, is, uh, the boss of everything, and we really can't know until what we can see out of that possible outcome. And actually, by the way, I will be going to the top rank event fight card of Joe Smith Jr. and uh, Caleb Johnson. In which, obviously, Joe Smith Jr., he's not fighting Caleb Johnson because Caleb Johnson, he apparently had COVID. But uh, I guess um, Joe Smith Jr. is going to fight this guy named Kenneth uh, Garfred. Uh, some, you know, like a guy that I don't, like, um, really know. But, uh... Yeah, I think um, as far as, you know, like what I could do there while being there is like if I could get some actual good interviews in with, uh, well, you know, like let's just say if I could run into Bob Arum, I'll definitely ask Bob Arum a shit ton of questions, but if I could probably talk to some, you know, like notable people that probably have some good connections, you know, like, you know, like with those fighters, I can definitely do that, but uh, nothing's like really guaranteed, so uh, I'll definitely try my best to try to get something, you know, in. And uh, yeah, you know, like I'll try to do the, the uh, best I can. So I think um, as far as everything else goes, uh, that will be pretty interesting. But yeah, let's talk about Tiafima Lopez and Jose Zapata because. That's actually a really, really good fight itself, but that's also a very dangerous, you know, style matchup. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, Jose Zapata, he had recently defeated uh, the uh, Puerto Rican fighter, Josue Vargas. Uh, Vargas, he's a really good fighter. Um, I like him a lot. But uh, as far as, you know, like what happened, Vargas, he unfortunately got knocked out, and Zapata... You know, he went on to, you know, be the victor in that fight. But um, as far as what could be next for Zapata, um, we obviously don't know what will be next for the future. But um, I think as far as what could happen is that if Bob Arum's going to be that type of guy to, you know, make Zapata fight Teofimo Lopez then to me I, um I'm not against it because I think uh T Tiafima Lopez versus Jose Zapata is a tremendously good fight and I think what could happen out of that fight itself is just that you know the, uh, there's just so much to actually you know see you know stylistically of like what could actually scale you know between those two but I don't see how that will benefit Teofimo's campaign to be welcome to the division at 140. Um, I think fighting, you know, a very dangerous, uh, heavy-hitting southpaw like Jose Zapata is not a good style matchup. Just as much as I, you know, like would say the same for Montana Love. But um, the only difference is just that Zapata... He's very flat-footed, and he really can't box, you know, very uh, fundamentally very well. And um, and uh, compare that to Montana Love. Um, he knows how to box, and he actually has really good, you know, um, respectable power, in which that will give Teofimo a lot of problems. So I don't know which poison would be better. And then on top of that, I think Teofimo could also wait for the winner between um, uh, Jose Pedraza and uh, Jose Ramirez, if I'm not mistaken. 
but still, it's just like, I don't know, man. Honestly, like, I think Tiafimo, um, he shouldn't really be going up against these dangerous, you know, type of style matchups. But, um, I don't, like, uh, think as far as, you know, like, what will happen is just like, Tiafimo, he's going to just end up facing either, you know, Pedraza or Ramirez. I mean, if anything, it'll probably just have to be maybe, you know, if I'm actually predicting it correctly, I think it'll probably either be Montana Love or maybe possibly Zepeda. But um, I don't know. Like, I think as far as, like, what could happen is just, like, Tiafimo, he can... Um, he could either go the route of facing Jose uh, uh, Zapata, and then after that, he can move up to fight, uh, you know, Ramirez and Pedraza winner, and then after that, probably move forward to to then fighting, I don't know, maybe Montana Love or possibly Ivan, uh, like uh, uh, um, Ivan Baranchik. I don't know, like, honestly, like, I don't know, like, what Bob Arum is planning on doing for Teofimo's uh, career, but if I'm going to, you know, pick a wild guess, I think Teofimo is going to be put in a bad position where he's not really going to do all these things that he says that he's actually going to do, and I think uh, Teofimo is going to be put in a really bad position where... You know, he's going to have to go through some, like, really difficult fights at 140. And uh, I just don't think he'll scale very well at the division unless he actually show, shows me something different that I haven't seen before. But either way, um, I don't think Tiofimo, he's out of the woods. You know, he has a lot of great potential to grow um, at the division. But uh, I think as far as, like, what could happen... Is that uh, Tiafimo? T- he can he can easily, you know, try to make some noise at the division, and he could probably, you know, do some you know like very good things there. But as much as I don't like Tio, I'm uh, um I'm gonna be honest about him. Like I I don't think he's gonna scale very well for the rest of his career, but. That could change if he's going to show me something different that I haven't seen yet. But uh, I hope Tiofimo, he can, you know, show me something different that I haven't seen. But as far as this potential fight, um, I think Zapata is a really bad style matchup. I don't think Zapata is going to be that type of guy that's going to give Tiofimo, you know, any breathing room. Uh, if anything... He's like a Mexican version of, you know, how should I say? He's a Mexican version of a Tommy Hearns mixed with a little Sean Porter, if that makes sense. And I'm not trying to use like, you know, Tommy Hearns as a, you know, like like um um as a definitive style. If anything, um, I'll just take out Tommy Hearns and I'll put in Salvador Sanchez with a Marquez shakeup, you know, like with it. But I'll probably most likely say it, it like, you know, th- that would be like a Marquez because, he, you know, he comes forward. But Zepeda, you know, he has slow feet like Marquez. But on top of that, he uses a lot of upper body movement t- to slip and counter a lot of punches in order for him to be successful to land a lot more deadlier shots for him to win the exchanges. See now, don't get it twisted, Zapata, he has flaws, but his flaws are mainly coming from him not being disciplined on the inside and on the outside, because what Zapata likes to do, he just likes to exchange and get himself into these really bad mix-ups that could end up either getting him knocked out or he knocks you out so I don't know I mean honestly Zapata versus Tiofimo is a really good style matchup because Zapata he's a puncher and Tio you know he's a semi-boxer puncher I don't call him like a pure boxer because obviously you know he's not like a pure boxer puncher He's very semi. He doesn't really have that much, you know, good foundation in how he fights. And uh, I just think, like, 
how he scales, you know, between guys that know how to box. Especially, like, you know, um, um, even with uh, the Lomachenko fight, you know, Vasil Lomachenko, when he started to press on the gas pedal more to, you know, apply more pressure with his shots, Tiafimo T- got, you know, uh, um, um, he got too scared. Uh, Tiafimo T- was not able to, you know, push Lomachenko back with his shots, and Lomo, he was hitting Tia with uh, flush shots that were... Uh, making Tio shell up and Lomachenko he just didn't apply pressure early and that didn't benefit him into his nature of uh, actually winning the fight late game so um, Lomachenko knew you know that um, if he actually let his hands go he actually would have made better progress in defeating Tiofimo sooner in that fight but as far as this fight goes, I don't know. I think Zapata and Tiafimo is a very good 50-50 style matchup. But on top of that, it's just that, you know, how can we, you know, like really see this fight go down? I think honestly, like someone's going to get stopped or someone's going to beat someone out to a decision. And I think Tiafimo, you know, if he boxes smart, in which I know he can definitely box. It's obviously clear like he's not a, a very school boxer, but he has some decent boxing IQ ability. Or, you know, some decent boxing ring IQ ability. But I will say, like, you know, like, you know, it, um, 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 it's a very, like, you know, decent premature boxing, boxing ring IQ. But, uh, if Tiofimo is focused and disciplined, he can easily win the fight to a decision. But if he's not, he's going to try to, you know, knock you out, try to go for broke, and that's what he likes to do. He likes to knock people out. He he's not a schooled pure boxer. But I will say Tiofimo, um, he's just that type of dude where, you know, it, like you know, um, he like you know, um. If Tiofimo can't hit you, you know, like with his best sh- shot, he's going to try to throw, you know, wild ass punches to try to, you know, like make a difference, you know, to win. And that's obviously something that Tiofimo has been known to do. You know, if he can't win the trades by trying to outbox you, then he will try to knock you out. And there has been some several instances where. He's been outboxed, but, you know, he really just tries to knock you out if you really can't, uh, or, um, if he really can't land his best shots on you, but I think as far as this fight goes, I think, uh, Tiofimo should be able to, you know, win against Jose Zapata, but that's never to be a guarantee because self-paws are very dangerous and very difficult. Especially when you uh, haven't really fought that many southpaws um, um, in your career. But I think as far as just this fight, um, I think Tiofimo should be the victor. Just simply because, you know, he has better, you know, like, like you know, better, you know, below average, decent, you know, um, ring IQ to make some decent adjustments in a fight. But... You know, um, um, if he fucks around and actually, like, you know, does something, you know, very stupid with Jose Zapata, and he does uh, the same thing similar to Josue Vargas, then I think Tiofimo can easily, you know, lose his fight. So, I don't know. I think, if anything, if Tiofimo, if he's food at 140, it will show that you know, like, within his, uh, you know, several fights that he has at 140, and I don't think Bob Arum's going to give him, like, you know, easy matchups. I think Bob Arum is actually going to feed T T Fimo to the Wolves after what he did between him and Camboso, so I just think, like, what's going to happen is just, like, T Fimo, he obviously will try to do, uh, the best he can against, uh, you know, Jose Zapata, but I mean, if, uh, Zapata can, can, can take, uh, Tiofimo's best punch, then, uh, by all means, um, I don't think Tiofimo is gonna last long at 140, because Tiofimo, 
he is, you know, basically labeled to be a weight bully. So knowing that he's moving up in, in weight, um, he could actually either do very well or he'll do very, very bad. And I don't think Tiafimo is going to scale well against guys that are just as big as him, but they're not going to go down as easily. So therefore, you know, if they can take your best shot and they could still walk you down and still make you feel un uh, like, you know, like uh, super, um, 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 uh, uh, super, uh, super, um, uh, uncomfortable in a fight uh sorry i'm just very tired uh from work but um i think tiafimo should definitely you know try not to consider going out like you know like a crazy you know brawler and getting himself caught with like you know like with crazy big shots that could end up getting himself knocked out so yeah, uh, that's pretty much my thoughts. Uh, be sure to check out Ashley's Corner. Um, I will link her video uh, in the description or just in the comments when I get a chance to post, you know, this uh, video. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, man. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, I will definitely see you guys later in the future. Um, I will give you my updates when I get to, you know, the fight and I hope, uh, I hope that, uh, the fights there are very good. Unfortunately, uh, Bruce Carrington, he wasn't able to be put on the card due to his opponent not being solidified. So, uh, that was very sad to hear about that. Um, hopefully he can get a fight because Bruce Carrington, he, you know, he is a very good fighter. Um, he actually did post as a recently on his um, Instagram that uh, he will be having his his uh, next fight scheduled for Tulsa, um, um, Oklahoma. So that will be on January 29th instead of January 15th. So uh, that's not bad. But at the same token, you know, like you got to stay active as soon as possible. And I really hope he doesn't just, you know, try to fight at least, like, two to three times, like, a year. That should be at least, um, um, like, I want to say at least, um, try to go for maybe six to eight times a year. And then at least, you know, take, like, a good, you know, couple month break. And then, you know, be back inside uh, the ring as soon as possible for at least a six to ten times a year type of fighting uh, s schedule, so, I don't know, I think, uh, Bru uh, Bruce Carrington, he's definitely the future at 130, or 126, I think he fights at 130, if I'm not mistaken, but, yeah, if he fights at 130, then, you know, best select him, because, you know, he is a damn good fighter, knowing that he came into the pros, you know, very late at, uh, 23, and now he's, uh, 24, so, I don't know, uh, I, I think, uh, Bruce is a very, very heavily talented fighter. He just needs to get the experience very quick and fast. And, uh, you know, he'll definitely make a lot of noise at 130. And shit, you know, if he could do the same thing at 135 or 140, then go for it. So, yeah, be sure to check out Ashley's Corner. She is, you know, the queen. And, uh, yeah, uh, that's about it. Uh, thank you guys for watching. This is K Rod 7435. Shout out to the mighty, mighty LDBC. Peace, and I'm out.